Dinesh D'Souza knew he couldn't fight him for years. The feds basically set people up. And he pled guilty and served nine months, uh, basically in a brainwashing facility. He can explain to you what happened in one of these, quote, halfway houses, one of these residential prisons, for getting a couple of his friends to donate to a political campaign and not setting up the proper paperwork for the PAC. So Hillary can get money from foreign dictators at the State Department to sell them arms. Hillary can run Benghazi, be involved in Fast and Furious, IRS persecution, all of it. And the Dinesh D'Souza goes to prison. And the way I've had this explained to me by lawyers and others, there's no way to run a company or to be involved in elections and not break a law. And they can selectively enforce whatever they want. They put people in prison, folks, for filling out a check amount wrong or bouncing a check now. This is how they operate, and they're coming after everybody. It is so draconian. Number one best-selling author, Dinesh D'Souza, the second largest grossing documentary film ever, America, 2016. And right before his other film was getting produced, they, they put him in jail to try to shut that down and kill the promotion. Stealing America, what my experience with criminal gangs taught me about Obama, Hillary, and the Democratic Party. And the thing is, they're going into a phase of total oppression now. So he is a political hero, speechwriter, and advisor to Ronald Reagan, no criminal record, graduated, you know, top of his class from a major university. I'm not going to go over his whole bio. And he could be locked up, Pi Beta Kappa from Dartmouth College, and then the rest of it, best-selling author, arrested, put in prison, no one safe, no one. But we can't capitulate to this fear. We have to stand up to it or we will become a Soviet Union style system. That's what they're doing. That's what they're pushing. Hillary's fun camps. Well, Dinesh D'Souza has already been sent to Hillary's fun camp. That's why we say Hillary for prison 2016. Dinesh D'Souza, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Uh, hey, it's good to be on the show. Well, I've already been ranting for five minutes. You've got the floor. Tell us about your experience, the book. I mean, I think there's to be a film about what they did to you. Uh, obviously, that's probably in the works. Uh, but but uh, break down this experience, what you've gone through. Uh, yes. Um, so at the beginning, I was uh, exhilarated because I thought that I had beaten the Obama administration's effort to send me to federal prison. But ironically, federal prison would have been white collar prison with basically nonviolent guys, uh, you know, um, 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 mayors and doctors who defrauded Medicare and executives and that sort of thing, people who do embezzlers. Uh, very safe place to be, actually. But uh, I got sentenced to eight months in a confinement center on the Mexican border. And it turns out that this is a facility where people who have done their prison term, or at least are close to being done with their prison term, come for typically 60 or 90 or 180 days, transitioning back to society. But it's the whole gamut of criminals. So you get drug smugglers, coyotes, uh, you get uh, armed robbery, you get guys who've done rape, who've done murder. So it's the whole gamut. And this is not a group I had ever, you know, needless to say, hung out with before. And so initially I was very much to myself in a kind of huddle. But after a while I realized, you know what, this is an amazing learning opportunity. I'm in a very unusual environment. Let me see if I can learn about this subculture that I know so little about. And it turns out that I learned a lot about it, and I learned a lot about politics that I didn't know before. Well, you've got a lot of good cheer after what you've been through. I know you've written about it being a big learning experience, and the book breaks that down. But describe to people what you went through, why you think they did it. And, and then obviously I mentioned Drudge and others, the persecution the IRS is engaged in. No one's gotten in trouble. I mean, this is probably the greatest political repression we've seen in the 240 years of this country. It's so naked. As far as I know, there's no one who, without a corrupt motive, because I didn't stand to gain anything. I did this straw donation, but the candidate didn't even know about it. So I wasn't trying to buy influence. I was trying to help a longtime college friend. Now, no one who has done that, to my knowledge, has been facing prison time in the history of the United well, States. Well, we ought to get a medal for trying to kick her out of the Senate, Hillary Clinton. I mean, you got put in jail for giving money to somebody to try to run against Hillary. Uh, yeah, it was, it was actually against Kristen Gillibrand, but nevertheless... Well, it, was for, running, it was for Hillary's seat, though. A big though. liberal Democrat yeah. running, running for the Senate in New York. Uh, now, here's the point. Uh, right about the same time, there was a big Democratic donor, a guy named Chatwal, another Asian Indian guy, as it turns out, like me. Anyway, he gave $180,000 of straw donations to Hillary and to a bunch of other Democrats. Now, this guy 
was trying to buy influence. In fact, he was even found guilty of witness tampering. He was trying to get witnesses to lie under oath. No prison, no confinement. So, you know, justice is not just a matter of, hey, do you break the law? But it's also a matter of proportioning the penalty to the crime, making sure other guys who did the same thing get roughly the same penalty. But the progressives pay no attention to that. They are perfectly willing to systematically go after their enemies while protecting their friends. Roll through the book. Roll through your experience with this criminal gang and then where you see this country going currently. Well, I think that, you know, I have been, I've lived in a sort of almost, you could say, protected intellectual enclave for most of my life. Uh, think tanks like the American Enterprise Institute or the Hoover Institution, the Reagan White House before that, president of a college. So I have tended to write about America, you may say, idealistically. Uh, the American founding, the principles of America, the American dream. Uh, but in prison, I began to see another version of American reality. And I realized, wait a minute, you can't compare the American dream to everybody else's reality. You've got to compare like with like. And so I saw a side of America I didn't know before. Now, I think the thing that opened my eyes was that the way that the criminals look at society is they don't look at it as a clash of ideas. They look at it, of it as a clash of interests. Powerful people who, who want to gain at the expense of others. They think that human nature is motivated uh, not by the, the urge to debate, but by avarice and lust and hatred and revenge. And so this was a kind, to me, an eye-opener because I began to see modern progressivism now, not just as the quest for social justice, the effort to fix the climate. No, these are just ruses. They're similar to what a, a gang might do when they're trying to convince an old lady to take the latch off the door before they kick the door in, go in and take all her stuff. Uh, they need, they, the, those criminals need a sales pitch to lower the guard of the person they're ripping off. And so I came to see some of these ideas that have been debating for a long time. Yes, we debate them on the merits, but we should also realize that these are ruses that are used by the government and by the progressives in the government to take power over us, to run our lives, and to take our stuff. I can't disagree with what you've said. And, you know, when I saw America... 2016. I, th I thought it was a good film. I thought a lot of it was accurate. But I kind of disagreed on air and said, look, Obama's just a globalist elitist. He doesn't actually hate America. He doesn't want to completely sabotage it. He just wants to lower it to the level of third world countries. Uh, and he doesn't really want to, you know, bring in a Muslim radical invasion and all this. And it's not really that bad. And I'm kind of conflating what your film with some of the other things being said by conservatives. But now watching what they do in Syria and Europe and here and just shutting off the power plants and Obamacare. They really have it out for this country. They really are trying to run a Cloward and Piven, crash the West system so that they can control our lives. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. These are, quite frankly, I'm not just saying I agree with you now. It's worse than I think what you said in your film. I think it is worse. But I think the reason it is worse is there's an element of gangsterism in all this that I didn't see. I mean, I, I basically said Obama's an anti-colonialist, but anti-colonialism is an ideal. It's a vision. We may disagree with it, but ultimately it is a, is, is a kind of a moral idea for the world. Obama thinks that the West has been an oppressor. He wants to reduce American wealth and power. So I think all of that actually is correct. But it misses the way that Obama is willing to skirt the laws. It misses the way in which Obama has this personal appetite to have not just to run the government, but have to have the government running the private sector. So look at the way that the federal government has increased its, its control, its domination over banks, investment companies, automobile companies, healthcare, every hospital. Now they're moving into the energy sector with this free college ruse. They're now moving into education. So they're trying to colonize, you might say, the private economy. Exactly. The they're society. colonizing us with monopoly capitalism on the top, but socialism for everybody else. Exactly. And they get enormous gains out of it. I mean, look at the way Hillary went from zero to $200 million at warp speed. The Clintons didn't invent the iPhone. They didn't come up with a product that everybody wants to buy. They figured out how to make politics pay for them big time. Now, in Arkansas, they were doing that in a small scale. Uh, but once they got to the federal government, you know, we've had corruption at the local level. We had Tammany Hall in New York. Uh, the daily racket in Chicago, but never before has a secretary of state figured out how can I rent out American foreign policy? 
the Russian oligarchs and Canadian billionaires and people who want who have oil interests in Africa. How can I make money off of the world? Even in the poorest spots like Haiti, you think there's no money in Haiti? Well, wait a minute. There's aid money in Haiti. A lot of it's flowing from the U.S. government. So if Clinton becomes the administrator of that aid and Hillary is a secretary of state, I mean, this is like putting Bonnie and Clyde in charge of the, you know, fixed Haiti operation. Needless to say, a great deal of money goes to the fixers. What do we do about this? Because I agree with you. I was dumbfounded. Uh, I didn't like John McCain. I didn't like, because he's about like Obama on many levels. I didn't like Barry Sotero, a.k.a. Barack Obama, whoever he is. But I thought, you know, maybe this will bring some racial unity and, and, and maybe the Democrats will, I mean, I know they're going to come after our guns and all the rest of it, but I, I thought, I mean, who could be worse than Clintons? So I, I kind of sat on the sidelines of that election. But, well, man, now seeing Obama in and everything he's doing, it's really scary, the consolidation of power, and to realize that they're trying to sew this country up and, and really are engaging in totalitarian-type activities. The uh, Obama and Hillary, I think, are in a different ball game than Bill Clinton. And, of course, Bill himself is in a different league than, let's say, Jimmy Carter or the earlier Democrats. I mean, no one would say that Jimmy Carter came to the presidency to make money. Now, Hillary did say, you know, and people laughed at her when she said we were dead broke. But it is true that the Clintons, like the Obamas, came to Washington without any money. And they have accumulated a vast amount of money. Now, I think the key difference to me between, let's say, Bill and Hillary is that Bill's appetite is limited by his own personal desires. I mean, he wants a big office. He wants to be top dog. He wants, he wants three women a day. He wants cocaine. He wants three women, yeah. But once, you, once he has all that, that's the circumference of his desires, and he's happy. Um, Hillary, on the other hand, wants to run things. She wants to tell people who are drilling in Texas where they can drill and, and what they should do with their, the, the oil that they take out of the ground. Hillary wants to run our lives. She's a kind of busybody in a way that Bill is not. Well, look at how she's trying to shut down the Laugh Factory, officially threatening them to shut them down if they, if they make jokes about her. I mean, that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And so this is a level of, in some ways, I think Hillary's maybe even worse than Obama. And the reason for this is that Obama's goals, I think, are ideological, but he's willing to be gangsterish about the way he gets there. So his goal, for example, is, let's say, for to bring illegals into this country and swell the ranks of Democratic voters. That's the goal. But that has an ideological component, to change the complexion of America, to you know give, give it back to the Mexicans because we took their land, blah, blah, blah. Now, in order to get there, Obama's willing to use to skirt the law. So he's willing to ignore what the Supreme Court says. He'll, he'll ignore the dictates of Congress. But the gangsterism is en route to achieving an ideological goal. Whereas with Hillary, I think gangsterism is the goal. She basically wants to be the first female mob boss of America. And, and that's her goal. And so she's gangsterish both in the way she goes about it and also in the, in the goal she wants to achieve. She is a ball breaker. Yes, and I also, you have to, I mean, from a distance, we have to admire her tenacity. Uh, all of this stuff would have sunk any other candidate. But she puts her head down doggedly, tenaciously. Basically, she dare, dares the American people. She goes, you have to bludgeon me to the ground and then sit on me. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going. Well, look at the things she's done. Brian Williams couldn't survive lying about being shot at in a helicopter. She says they're shot at at a C-130, that she shot it on the ground. And there's video, CBS News, nothing happened. Total lies. No war going on for hundreds of miles. Just a total fraud. And then you just stack. Th the other day, I was thinking about Hillary doing a video about her crimes. And I was going back through my memory and, and, and thinking, it was so many scandals, so much corruption, uh, defending Clinton and, and the and settling rape cases. Just, it literally goes on and on. And then to watch Gloria Steinem and the Democrats defend her no matter what really lets you know how evil these people are and how they defend persecuting thousands of churches and, and conservative groups and veterans groups and, and you know, even arresting people. And then, and then MSNBC, Maddow and others, I've seen them go, well, of course we're going after the Tea Party with the IRS. You're racist. I mean, they're openly like the Nazis. And people use Nazi analogies too much. But let me tell you, the Nazis nakedly got up and said, let's start arresting people for their views. And, and that's what they're now doing. They're saying arrest people that deny global warming. I mean, they're having national you know, polls. These people are freakish. I mean, I've got to say it. Even the average Democratic follower now is more like a brown shirt, crazed little rat. And I've never hated Democrats, but i got to tell you, they are 
really a, a freakish, dangerous, motley crew. Well, what really I, I what I found really protects Hillary is the fact that she's got the mainstream media.